Dr. Michael Fish, the editor of the Journal of Supportive Oncology, sat down with me at the end of the symposium to talk about the highlights for clinicians. The first thing that caught my eye is the meeting itself, quality improvement meeting. Um, it's the first of its kind, and I had the sense that it's really something special and that in the future I'll be describing to people that this is when it all started, a first quality improvement meeting. Uh, I told some colleagues it, it's not like we're going to end up saying to ourselves, yes, we did a quality improvement meeting for a few years and then it all sort of petered off. You know that this is going to keep on going and the only question is, why did it start this year and not sooner? So one of the striking things at this meeting was the fact that palliative care pervaded the entire meeting. I made comments to some of my colleagues that this is like a, an underground palliative care meeting. Um, and it's not that it was uh, so infiltrated by palliative care professionals, although there were certainly plenty of them here, um, but rather the principles of palliative care would come up in one after another context throughout the meeting. Nearly every talk would, would touch upon the importance of uh, assessing and managing symptoms to improve cancer care, the importance of communicating goals of care with the patients and families, and end-of-life planning, advanced care planning, uh, truth-telling. Um, those themes just resonated talk to talk. It seems like a lot of this depends on electronic health records, electronic medical records, IT of various um, kinds. Do you think that has finally reached the adoption point where this can take off, or are we still in baby steps with that? I thought the whole um, issue of ele electronic records was uh, that we're still at the baby stages. In fact, one of the most amusing comments was a, a questioner during one of the sessions who said, it seems like our electronic health record is still in the toddler stage, and it was a special needs toddler as well after eight years uh, in, in that person's organization. And I think uh, that resonates with a lot of people, even when they have electronic health records, still trying to understand um, how to use them well and how to use those records to actually improve care and try to manage some of the uh, unintended consequences of using their electronic health records. So it was emphasized how the records can sometimes distract us from paying attention to the patient. The big um, systems like MD Anderson, VA, Kaiser, you have ASCO and the American College of Surgeons with um, programs, American Cancer Society. How are oncologists to choose from all this? I use them all, pick ones, what, what would you do? Well, uh, one of the themes that came forth at this meeting in my mind was uh, as a starting point, copy, copy, copy. Across the board, the Quality Oncology Practice Initiative, the ASCO program, uh, that was a really big theme in terms of uh, a place to get started. Uh, but you're quite right, exactly in terms of developing pathways and performance measures, there's, there's quite a lot of diversity, which is at one time, um, you know, uh, very encouraging because there's just a lot of innovation in different directions. Um, but it can be a bit overwhelming, and um, and you, you realize that this is the this is really the very beginning. It's the first quality meeting, and uh, there's there's a lot more to go. Um, but one of the things that really resonated with me across all this uh, complexity was a simple statement attributed to uh, Brent James that was repeated throughout the meeting, and that is uh, something like, uh, "It's more important." to do things the same way than to do it the right way. So there were a lot of different same ways of doing it, but uh, a groups of physicians at the practice level have to agree how they are going to do it in their site for who they are, for who their patients are, and then periodically rethink um, how they might do it differently, all the while collecting data to inform them how well they're doing. Is there anything that you heard here specifically that um, will cause you to go back and make a specific change in your practice? Well, yeah, yes. Uh, what will make me make a specific change in my practice? Um, one of the themes that came up over and over again was the notion of the Hawthorne effect. So the Hawthorne effect, is, you know, relates to um, the idea that 
uh, just being watched, just the process of being observed in what you're doing, whether you're a worker in a fact factory or a healthcare worker delivering care, the, the mere process of shining a light on what you're doing will naturally make you improve. And throughout the meeting, it was pretty clear that that's not always the case that you're gonna to have to intentionally design. You'll have to look at what's being done. Looking is important. Looking by itself is not a process improvement guarantee. That you'll have to intentionally reflect, get on the same page, decide how you might do things better, have pilot projects. And so uh, things that we've been doing in, in my practice arenas have involved to some extent looking at what we're doing, but not frequently enough developing specific projects and ways of, of uh, having dialogue and deciding what we're going to intentionally do to get better. So I think we've got work to do.